Hi and welcome back to another edition of the Indusoft Web Studio video training series. Today we're going to show you how to localize both your development uh, and your runtime for different languages. Um, so let's uh, see what we're going to do in this uh, video. We're going to change the development into a different language. I'll show you how to do that. And then we're going to also set up the runtime to allow different languages uh, to be chosen during runtime. Uh, we're going to show you the um, worksheet where we can enable the translation. We're going to set up a table and add a language in. And then we're going to use the set language function to be able to switch between the, the different languages. Uh, also, just as a reminder, both Web Thin Clients and Secure Viewer can use different languages. Um, for example, if you have your main uh, server runtime, main to do soft Web Studio runtime showing English, uh, the web thin client, one web thin client should could show French, another web, web thin client could show Spanish, another one could show Chinese, and all uh, while the main server stays on, on its own language and secure viewer can do the same thing as well. So just a reminder about that. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Let's uh, see how easy it is to change the development environment. We'll go into Indusoft Web Studio here. And here under the View tab, you're going to find under the Options group uh, Language. And this is used, you can see the tooltip there, Set Language is used to do, uh, uh, for the development environment. I believe that the radio uh, button here is uh, Use Current uh, Regional Options for Default. We need to select this Use Always. And then we have the choice right now of French, German, and Portuguese. And we do plan on other adding other languages uh, later. So for this one, I'm just going to choose uh, French here and then say OK. I get this message that says it's not going to uh, take effect until the next time we relaunch uh, Indusoft Web Studio. And also a reminder that uh, any changes in the menus and toolbars uh, we would lose. Is that OK? I'm going to say yes there. And now I'm going to close Indusoft Web Studio and then relaunch it. And then uh, after the splash screen comes up, and then we should see Indusoft Web Studio come up in French. Okay, so uh, we can see that the development environment, all the tabs, the menus, uh, things of that nature, if I right click here, go to screen attributes, uh, we can see the different menus are in different languages. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel all of that. We can also see that uh, if I put objects on the screen, uh, let's put a piece of text here. When I go into the properties of that, the properties are also in the different languages as well. So it should be useful for those, those different languages. Uh, I'm not going to save this, and now I need to remember how to get back to that. I think this was View, and we'll go here under Language, and then change this back to English, and save message. Notice all the messages are in, in that particular language as well. And go back, and now we'll rerun into Soft Web Studio, hopefully in English. And after the splash screen, come back up and see it in English. Okay, good. Uh, okay, so that was uh, how to change the development environment. Now let's uh, find out how to go change the uh, runtime. Uh, that can be found here under the Insert tab under Translation, or you can also find that under Global Translation. Those uh, two do the exact same thing. It's just your choice how to get to it a little bit easier. So I'm going to go here and double-click on Translation. Here we're going to see a translation table. I'm going to close the Output Window and Database Spy just to give us a little bit more room. When I first open this up, it's going to show us the original language, the source language that this was created in. In this case, it's English. And then we have uh, target languages. Uh, notice here that we can disable translation altogether. That's a, a kind of a global feature that we can disable translation. Or there's the possibility of disabling it on individual objects. Let's go take a look at that before we do uh, anything here. So we'll go under Graphics, Screens, uh, Navigation. And let's say the main screen button here, I'm going to uh, right click on and open up its properties. Here under config is um, uh, for, let's see, where is it? Oh, sorry, there's um, uh, nothing under command that gets translated, it's on the button itself. Uh, we would go under Advanced and Disable Translation for that particular button. Uh, I also want to go do that for Tank Demo. I'm going to need that uh, in a bit. So I'll go click on Tank Demo. 
and uh, properties and then again under the button itself advanced uh, disable translation for that so we'll take a look to make sure that those don't get translated uh, in a little while here I will uh, close that screen save that now back under the uh, translation where was that that was global translation so what we're gonna do is we're gonna change or, or add a language for French right now we have just English in here and I'm gonna go ahead and add um, French in Canada so the first part of this list is is uh, maybe more recent selections that I have done uh, but then starting down here, the list goes to alphabetical order uh, for all the languages. To get to uh, French, I'm going to just hit the letter F, and it's going to post me down in the Fs here, and then I can choose French from Canada. Notice that this number here is 3084. That's the Windows localization ID uh, code for this particular language. I'm going to go ahead and select OK. Notice here that uh, English, in the U.S. English anyway, is 1033. I'm going to need those numbers uh, in a bit. We can also choose uh, the date order, whether it's day, month, year, month, day, year, year, month, day, and whatever separator we want to put in there so we uh, can respect different formats from different countries. And we can also uh, choose some different fonts um, on how we want that to show up, different sizes uh, and whatnot. So we can uh, show the source uh, sizes and then change the size, the fonts, uh, maybe maybe one language we want in Arial, the next one we want in Times New Roman, or maybe there's a better character set for um, a, a Unicode font, let's say a, a Japanese uh, kanji, katakana, hiragana, uh, or you know, Cyrillic or something like that from Russia. Uh, we can also change um, the style and whether or not it's uh, enabled for right to left reading. Uh, in this target size field, you would put a percent number. Let's say maybe it's an 80%. Uh, you would put an 80% right in there. I'm not going to do that during this video, but uh, you get the idea. And cancel out of that. And how I'm going to do this is uh, previously in version 7.0, we had enabled an, an automatic translation that went out to Google and did the translate. Well, Google has since shut down that service or made it a paid for service, uh, but it's still pretty easy to do. We're going to actually. Uh, just do a copy and paste and it adds just a couple of steps but it only takes a couple of seconds. So I'm going to select this column, hit control C on my keyboard. That's going to uh, copy all the text out of uh, my project and I can filter this if I wanted to and uh, use these filters and sort just on the text that I wanted to. But in this case I'm going to select everything and then uh, what I'm going to do is bring in, I've, I've opened up uh, Google Translate and set it to translate to French already. Um, you can just open up Translate uh, in, in Google. Now you don't have to use Google, you can use any other translation tool or you can use an outside third-party source, uh, but this seems to work fairly well. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and paste in that entire set of um, uh, English and then over here we can see we get the French, trans French translation. If I scroll all the way down to the bottom there's a convenient little button down here that selects all and then I can hit uh, Control C on my keyboard and then go back into my development environment. Uh, here I'm going to click on the first cell where I want to paste that back in and hit Control V. And now what it has done is pasted in all of that text. And so we can see that we've got uh, all of that text pasted in. And notice uh, that it's a phrase by phrase um, uh, translation. It's not necessarily a word by word. Now one of the things that you're going to have to pay attention to here is there are several different categories of um, translations that you're going to need to protect against and one of the things that we do is is because we're translating all of the text in the entire project there are some things that will get uh, a little bit messed up based on uh, the way that that it does the translate so for example if I go in here to the source and type in curly bracket I can see that uh, it has translated the word web browser actually um, Maybe the database spy gets translated down here, but the word label uh, seems to be okay. Uh, but notice it, it seems to have put a space in between pound sign and label. That may be something that will cause uh, IndieSoft Web Studio to uh, have a problem with. Um, so there's several different ways that we can do this manually. Uh, going in and editing this uh, is probably one of the one of the better ways. Another um, uh, thing that we need to watch out for would be um, connection strings for providers. So let's say I looked for star, uh, Olay, um, 
so the connection strings uh, this might accidentally get translated <clears throat> depending on the wording in here so you would have to uh, watch out for that uh, something else would be SQL statements uh, I don't know the best thing to look on we'll just look for where uh, so we can see that uh, my table uh, has actually been translated to ma table which uh, will not be found in the database so we can go ahead and uh, man manually translate uh, for that. Uh, one of the things that you should do is make sure you make a backup of your uh, project before you do this translation. I uh, apologize I'm showing you this now once we're in here. In fact, uh, what you would do would be to close this without saving. Make a backup copy of your application just in case uh, so you don't accidentally uh, overwrite anything that you want to if you're not very, very familiar with this tool. Um, there are other uh, things that you would have to watch out for and it's a um, good practice to go through every line item by line item to make sure that that was translated. Now, that, we are using Google Translate in this application, um, but uh, it is highly recommended because that's a machine translation that you go through and look at every single line item and make sure there's uh, no particular problems. You should also go open up your screens and make sure that there's nothing that uh, is formatted improperly uh, as well. So, uh, once we have this, uh, let's say we've added this, we have the target language um, let's see, we can go here. We could import uh, that if we had a, a, a already created CSV file, for example. Um, so, again, I need to remember these codes. This is 1033 for English and 3084 for French. I'm going to go ahead and save this translation table. Say yes. And now what I'm going to do is, um, there may be better places to put this, but up on the header of my project, move this logo up a little bit, I'm going to put a button and we're going to use the built-in uh, scripting language uh, function called set language. In this case I'm going to do English and we will put a command animation on this and use the built-in scripting language called set language and then in parentheses we just put the uh, English local ID code which was 1033 and let me go ahead and show you what the, that is. If we go here under search set language and we're going to take a look at the set language uh, function and we can see that we can get an error code returned if we want to and then here's the format for that and that's what I just typed in there so now that we have this button I'm just going to hold down my control key copy that over change this to the uh, French Canada code which would be 3084 and I'm going to go change the button on the text to French and now I should be able to save and run this. Now there are a few different things. You know, let me do this. Let me go back up on the header because I know that uh, some of this will be mistranslated if I'm not careful. So I'm going to go in here to the caption and disable translation for that. And I know some of the buttons uh, will cause problems, but we'll see those and, and uh, show you what uh, you can typically expect. Go ahead and click on Run at this point. Now our application will start up in English in this case and we can change to a different language. In this case we can see that uh, some of these were changed. Notice that main and tank demo did not change because we so disabled that as well as the status bar. Uh, these buttons, the languages uh, got mistranslated uh, so they're not showing up on there, but the button, fu the button functionalities do still work. Um, so we can go into uh, some of these other screens and see all the translations that took place and, and see how easy that was. Let me go back into English here and uh, go ahead and ac exit the application. One of the other things that I wanted to show you is during the um, preparation for making this video uh, I realized that the startup target language uh, is not working properly but that's a, an easy workaround. So normally what you would do would be, let's say you wanted this project to start up in French, uh, you should select that, but uh, I found that's not working. So how would we get around that? What we can do is in the startup script, so here under tasks in the startup script here, what we can do is we can put uh, the set language function, dollar sign set language, and put in here the 3084, and now when we run this project it should start up in French so we should be able to go into here and it does not so okay so the best place to do that is not uh, on the startup script um, in fact uh, if you look that this is uh, procedures available uh, not necessarily 
executing of the, the code. So what I want to do is not put it there. Uh, I want to put this under graphics, the graphics script in the on start. So when I first start the graphics, uh, what we can do, not all of that, is uh, uh, dollar sign set language and start this up with the uh, 3084 that would be the French for Canada and that should work. We'll save that and now we'll go back and run this project. It should start up in French. Okay, so that's a little bit better. So there's a few different ways to uh, make uh, your project localized and uh, again some some big pointers there is make sure you make a backup of your application before you try this and also um, make sure you go back and review that translation table and uh, make sure uh, all the different things such as um, select or the uh, different statements from SQL, uh, the provider statements for your uh, any database setup, anything inside of curly brackets, uh, watch out for extra spaces and the, the accidental translation of, of uh, tag names and things of that nature. It's a really good idea to go through this list uh, with some pretty good detail. So. There you should have it, and hopefully you got something out of this. And uh, if you have any feedback, please let us know by sending us an email to info at Thanks, and have a great day.